will be an overview about what you have sometimes already seen in the preoperative Scheinflug analysis. We perform preoperative before cataract surgery, actual length measurements, IL calculation, and intraoperative guidance is something we have to spend on. Cataract pre screening routine. I'm not sure what's interfering. Surface disease analysis with a carrier graph is something very important in order to have a stable situation in the entry segment, both for the measurements and for the outcome for the patient as well. So, for making measurements with the Pentacam IXL in order to see with a fast screening report about any abnormalities in general of the anterior and posterior segment of the eye, and the Berlin and Brosio uh, calculation in order to exclude any type of keratoconic changes or corneal optical densitometry in order to picked out uh, patients with Fuchs dystrophy or a nucleus staging to have objective measurement of the density of the nucleus we have to expect to calculate the, the approach if we are using a femtosecond laser or regular standard phaco emulsification. Then we can join the cataract preoperative display, what we have just seen in Professor Conan's presentation, where we deal with higher order aberrations, asphericity, actual and total corneal refractive power map in order to analyze the corneal shape with regard to toric IOLs and the SIMK versus the total corneal refractive power in order to correct the astigmatism values. This is just the view from the keratograph 5M to show you clearly that we have indeed in some patients before cataract surgery, we have dry eye spots, we have to treat them before we can have reliable measurements to perform with the pentacum to have excellent results. And even four weeks after surgery, up to 10 weeks after surgery, we, we can expect a normal range in the anterior segment. Tear film stability and optical quality improves, as we have shown last year, at the same place in Lisbon. The preoperative Scheinflug analysis includes the cornea and the lens pathology. This is what we have already heard, just to show you some clinical data in order to exclude from first keratoconus from these eyes from the posterior surface coming or Fuchs endothelial cell, you can nicely see the densitometry map uh, evaluated by the machine in order to see the amount of cloudiness of the cornea. And even if the patient underwent prior cataract surgery, LASIK or other corneal refractive reshapings, you can see this nicely in the overview. So therefore, with Professor Meda in order to screen the patients respective to their needs and to their expectations, which type of lenses we can use in cataract surgery. We have this preoperative assessment tool, which is very helpful to evaluate first corneal irregularities with addressing higher order aberrations, corneal shape assessment qualitatively, and the spherical aberrations, whether an asphericity correcting lens is suitable or not. It has been published a few years ago, and I will show, uh, go through the slides with you together in the next five minutes. So you can see when you look at the total corneal irregular astigmatism, the higher order aberrations, you can see the values when they are beyond 0 0.3 microns, then the patient at all might be suitable for the implantation of a multifocal IOL. Then Court distance is something else we have to take into consideration by multifocal IOL implantation, as well as when we think about the corneal shape with regard to astigmatism and to exclude keratoconus. This has been done in these two charts as well. So next step is to focus on that what we have already heard about higher order aberrations, spherical aberrations, when we want to address the wish for enhancing depth of focus using asphericity correcting lenses, or if we want to leave the patient with this asphericity at all. Or last, when we want to look at the difference between the entry segment and the total corneal refractive power with regard to maximum astigmatism maxi uh, attitude in order to see whether the axis is the same or if we have to change our decision when implanting a toric intraocular lens. So this is the summary of this magnified image where you can see all this actual length measurements Professor Cohen already has shown us. And the new thing in the machine is that we have taken the measurements for actual length and entry segment image, the Scheinflug 
technology in accordance with the same measuring, measurable, uh, measurement axis. So they can match both images together in order to have a reliable calculation of that's what's going behind. So the IOL database of all currently available and CE marked lenses is included. You can perform constant optimization for 25 surgeons at your site with the current software. It's network compatible and the latest software is the 1.21 R43 is available on a free base. It's faster and we can be lead it to measure more dense cataracts. This is the overview and an intelligent mathematical algorithm allows the machine to select the right values for the actual length. They are doing six measurements, six single measurements and out of them the most reliable one is chosen. And these are the intraocular lens calculation formulas included for regular eyes, for post-refractive eyes, no history, history formulas, and for toric IOLs. I just want to highlight that we have the very toric formula including the posterior curvature and, the, and what's new with the new software which is available right now, the Olson ray tracing suitable for all the odd eyes with corneal scars and so on. This is very important for the next part of the talk because when we are talking about the Heidelberg study, I will show you in a few seconds, then you will understand what's behind. So this is the printout for the right and for the left eye. Here is the left eye and you can select a lot of intraocular lenses and you can select especially the formulas you are used to use in these cases. So transition to the OR is something not in the future, but we have it already. So we can combine the measurements of the Pentacam directly with the implantation setup with the Leica microscope. The true link vision is already available. So this is a study we have performed in Heidelberg. It's still ongoing and it's presented from Dr. Galen as a presented poster at the ESCRS this year. And we compared the IOL Master 700 with the Pentacam measurements. We took in all patients which were scheduled for cataract surgery, which means we included no ocular pathologies, exclusion criteria none. It seems to be a very simple study, but it isn't because we did three consecutive measurements per eye with both devices after each other. The eyes were left untouched, so no mitriasis or any other applanation, tonometry or application of eye has been performed. And this is just to show you out of 163 eyes, this will be 100%. With the IL Master 700, we were able to measure 131 eyes reliable, and with the Pentacam, a little bit more. And we look at the coefficients of variance, which addresses the repeatability of the measurements which were done in a consecutive manner. You can see that both devices are very reliable with repeated measurements, and the Pentacam is a little bit superior. So. In conclusion, we can say that we had not to exclude any ocular pathologies and we have to carefully look at the quality scale and at the uh, expectation mark at the IOL mast in order to define which measurements are under, uh, undergone with the best optical quality and reproducibility of the measurements with both uh, devices is perfectly guaranteed. So higher success rate for actual length measurements in an average patient uh, selection with the Pentacam was given and the higher repeatability was for all parameters with the Pentacam AXL with respect to anterior chamber depths, whereas the IL Master 700 is a little bit superior. And therefore, I thank you very much for your kind attention. Yeah.